r slash credit fathers of reddit what did your daughter's boyfriend do for you to hate slash love him <laughs> aww i'm so late to this but i'm going to comment anyway just the daughter though my dad recently died of cancer but he loved my boyfriend in his final year i think it's worth mentioning because of the two years prior to that when my dad saw boyfriends specifically this one as only an obstacle to his daughter's eventual white house run or best-selling novels dad had high hopes for me my boyfriend came over to hang out with him every day after work to give me stuck at work until 5 peace of mind surprised me by shaving dad's head after i'd been commenting that the chima was making his hair do crazy things helped me get dad down the excruciating stairs and to appointments daily Helped me weigh the decision of hospice, or keeping him at home with me alone, when it was getting to be too much. Supported my decision to keep him at home, even though he felt hospice would be better for me. Was the first one there to help me, when my dad could no longer control his body, and would have accidents. Helped me with that without even blinking. Kept track of how much I was sleeping, and came over insisting I go nap regularly. Called me in the end any time he was with my dad, and he was having a more lucid moment and I couldn't be there. Assured my dad constantly that I didn't need anyone to take care of me after he was gone, but that he would watch after me for him forever. Recorded himself asking my dad for permission to marry me, and insists I only get to listen to it on the day of our wedding. Held my hand during the funeral, helped me learn how to live a normal life again. My dad was so worried about leaving such a young daughter behind, but he told me he felt a little better about it knowing I'd have a guy like that to watch out for me in my darkest times. And it doesn't get much darker than losing your best friend to cancer. Love to all you dads. Edit. Thanks guys. I didn't think anyone was going to see this. I do have a keeper. We are not engaged yet but I intend to put a ring on it after a few years of travel and financial stability together. I'm so sorry to everyone else that's been through this or something similar. My youngest son has a type of congenital myopathy that makes him very weak. While he can walk, he can't run or jump and falls down at it. Needless to say he finds this very humiliating. He is 16. We were at a restaurant and my son was standing next to me with untied shoelaces. Unfortunately he tripped and, due to his weakness, could not catch himself, crashing heavily to the ground in the middle of a crowded restaurant. My daughter's boyfriend, without missing a beat, immediately lay down next to him on the floor and asked him how is it going down here and otherwise made some small talk to ease some of my son's embarrassment. He has always treated my son like his little brother, but that selfless act was unforgettable. Needless to say I have loved him like a son ever since. Edit, since some people think that this bordered on bullying or an attempt at humiliation etc. Allow me to elaborate. Copied from further down the thread. My son is embarrassed and mortified when anyone helps him or otherwise fusses over him when this happens. Anyone walking into the room or looking over to see what the fuss was about saw two teenagers acting like goofs rather than one helping another get off the floor after falling. When my daughter's boyfriend then jumped up and helped him up. It looked much more natural he really did, in an instant saved my son a great deal of embarrassment. I realize it's tough to understand. Edit. 2. Thanks for all the love and the gold. I'm overwhelmed that this story has touched so many. My daughter has depression. She's always been the black sheep of the family, the one daughter closer to me than their mom. She'd rather lay around and listen to metal than go out with her sisters, and would rather go on a hike than shopping. Still, sometimes she does and wants things that I just don't get. I think a lot of the quirks come from the depression, and that's just hard to deal with sometimes. And it means she has needs, and it takes a special kind of person to deal with that correctly. She's my little girl, and I want only the best for her. So then here comes this scruffy faced long haired kid. When you talk to him, you feel like you're talking to Plato in the flesh, but his school performance is less than stellar. He has a terrible work ethic, as far as I can tell. 
he was smart, but I just felt like he was destined to have no real world success whatsoever. But I paid attention because my daughter's not stupid and I figured that there must be some reason she chose this guy. Soon it became very apparent why. He gets her and damned if it doesn't seem almost supernatural sometimes. She can be having a very bad day with the depression, but not long. After she's with him she's laughing. And it's obvious he loves her, just from the way he talks to her and looks at her, not in a lustful way, but in a caring way. I asked why him, and she explained to me that for some reason, around him she feels calm and happy. She said that, even when they first met, she could talk to him for hours and hours without getting tired at all, like she did with most people after a few minutes. They have this dynamic about them as well. She's practical and straightforward, with her feet on the ground. He's thoughtful and abstract, head in the sky. Together, they seem to keep each other in line. In fact, the whole way they operated reminded me of an old married couple. And there's something just so damned likable about the guy. You get a sense of honesty, integrity, and a healthy dose of idealism when you talk to him. He talks about how he wants to make the world a better place, and just by the way he says it, you almost believe that he really could. So maybe against my better judgment, he got my seal of approval. My daughter wouldn't be happy with a someone practical, really. She needs someone like that, he makes her happy, and I think that's best for her. Edit, wow, this blew up, gold and everything. I was going to leave this account and be done with it since I'm not a frequent redditor but I feel like I have to add a little something because of this response. Thank you for all the replies, it's good to know that so many people found this story heartwarming. It's also interesting to know that this is apparently not a lone case as quite a few replies have said that it's similar to themselves or people they know. I guess it makes sense, but call me stupid, because I'd never really considered it before. Some questions have arisen about approximately where we are from, or if you know us. I'm going to leave these unanswered, just for privacy's sake, I'm a private sort of guy. Some people have asked if they are still together. They are, and no worries, they're both doing just fine. How I wrote it, my assessment about his future, seemed a little harsh, there was not much question about his ability to get or hold a job, it was more the idea of getting and holding a well paying job. Maybe I'm just a cynical old man, but I feel like the future of the stereotypical artist or philosopher is not a stable one, they're a very specialized sort, and their sort of specialization just isn't commonly applicable. He's proven himself to be mature and able, though. I think that at the time he needed a little help getting going, but now the gears are turning. I certainly don't expect him to be a failure at life. My ex-girlfriend stepdad is probably one of the best people I know. He welcomed me into their family when I was struggling with finances and working two jobs. They were upper middle class with a bit of disposable income and they fed me pretty often. So I always wanted to help where I could. Chores, moving, watching the house, errands. It's a family of four very emotional females and him. Gotta be stressful. He was a networking engineer and knew my love for computers. Also a huge nerd like myself. Weird movies, video games, a whole lot of things his four female housemates didn't share a passion for. He'd invite me to his work to talk and even tried to get me hired with him. Ultimately he is a reason I went back to school. The relationship didn't work out. One night he picked me up to talk. He convinced me not to go back to her and dropped a lot of information on me about who she really was. At this point she had already cheated on me, but for him to open my eyes about his stepdaughter so that I could move on in my life and find someone better was amazing. We still meet. She has no idea, but we play Destiny and Halo when we can online. I move into my own place in a week and I honestly am wrestling with the idea of inviting him over for a break from that hellhole to watch Volcano High. The biggest thing that told me he cared about me was this, you care about her. We see it every day and she couldn't care less. Nothing will be enough for her and I don't want that torture for you. You deserve to be happy and appreciated. I've been trying to tell you for a while she isn't going to work with you. 
I raised my sister as my daughter, so I don't know if mine counts. My little sister has dated some serious fuckwits in the past. She actually had to break up with one because he literally had no personality. None. That's the only reason she broke up with him. After a few months she found it creepy that there was literally nothing special about who he was and she always finds something. So I really hated almost all of them. Except Ricky. Ricky was like a 1950s greaser that just bopped into modern day. He even played Kinnicky in Greece at their high school. He wasn't just a handsome young man, he was beautiful inside and out, and he was sensitive. My sister had never been with a truly sweet kid before. He cared for her like no other human could. They were just instant. The first day they were together it was like they had always been. Ricky isn't going to live to an old age. He had Lyme disease or something for several months as a kid before his shit dad finally took him to a doctor. He's okay now, but neurological problems are going to happen when he gets to about 50, so he doesn't feel like he has time to waste on trivial relationships. He was honest with me about it because he was thinking about a whole life with my sister, so he wanted me to know what that meant. He built his own car from just a VW Bug shell and chassis, and when he finished he built one for my sister. It was a 1969 white convertible bug. So beautiful. I already liked the kid as a person. I mean, I invited him over to my house as much as my sister did. I considered this young kid to be my friend. I was sure that, even though they were just finishing high school, they were going to be husband and wife within the next few years, and I was thrilled. Then my little sister was raped. It was at a party he couldn't go to that night because he had schoolwork. It was so hard. He blamed himself. They never recovered from it. He stayed by her until the very end, but she went into some heavy depression. She started doing drugs, drinking to excess, and she cheated on him. A lot. My little sister wasn't the same. He forgave her for everything. Every time. He knew it was her dealing with the trauma, which is true, but she couldn't forgive herself for what she was doing to him, and ended it. He was heartbroken, and I had to talk him out of suicide. My sister was his world. I still have Ricka's number. I gave him a car recently that I knew he could fix and sell. My dog cried when she saw him and wouldn't leave his lap while squealing with happiness. She's a German Shepherd, so she isn't little after about 6 years of his absence. I think she liked him more than even me. I don't expect that they'll ever get back together. Too much pain that wasn't either one's fault, but I've contacted him about cars a few times. I'm actually going to be taking him for a beer soon, since I missed his 21st by a few years. His livable life is halfway over, and last I saw him, I noticed a tremble in his hands. He's still Ricky. He's still amazing. He still loves my sister. I still miss him. All the time. Hate story, I decided to be a good boyfriend and brought pink roses, my GF's favorite color, when I picked GF up for our date. She loved them, put them in a vase, and left the vase on the kitchen counter. We went out. When I dropped her off, slightly before curfew, because I really wanted her parents to trust me, her dad was cooler than being cool, which is to say, ice cold, to me. Couldn't figure out why, I'd done everything by the book. Skedaddled as quickly as I could, because whatever I had done was clearly the wrong move. She called me 30 minutes later to explain, GF's mom had come home, saw the roses, and assumed they were a gift from dad. Was so happy, because he never does stuff like that for her, and it was so sweet and romantic. He came home. She thanked him for the thoughtful gesture. He said what? A fight ensued. So basically I got put in the shithouse for blowing up dad's spot and ruining his evening. All because I wanted to be a good guy. Girlfriend in question here. The two of them climbed Mount Doom together. As an only child, my parents have always been cool with me bringing friends on holiday with me. We were going to New Zealand for a week when I was 19. So my so came with us, even though it wasn't long after we started dating. My dad is the really athletic type. My mother and I really aren't, 
so normally on family holidays, dad would be off mountain climbing and bike riding and stuff like that on his own. He always encouraged me to go with him, but it wasn't really my thing. But my so is really athletic, so on this occasion, they went climbing up one of the local mountains, which some of the Mount Doom scenes were filmed on. They got on really well together, and my dad really liked having the company of someone who enjoyed it as much as he did. Well, my daughter is four and one half and her boyfriend Henry James is the son of my best friend from college. We moved across the country when they did, so we could raise our kids together. He and I are both mariners, so a commute of 3,000 miles isn't significant. The first time Henry met her, she was three, and he was two and one half, and he unbuttoned her shirt in the back with little tiny buttons that took me forever to button up. Just a couple days ago, he pulled the smoothest line I ever heard when he said I have a new flashlight, let's turn out the lights. I'll let that go, but about 15 minutes later I heard all kinds of commotion coming from his bedroom and went to investigate. They were both in the bed, a little kid bed with a guardrail, so he couldn't fall out, and they were chasing each other around and around. In a dark room. With my little girl. I'm not going to say I like the little dude, but I respect that. I was 17 before I got a pretty girl in my bed in the dark. And now I think I ought to go clean my shotgun. Ed say my GF father likes me. The first time I met him, I was driving over to pick up my GF to go to the movies. I roll into the driveway and the garage door was open and inside was a 69 Mustang, parts strewn everywhere, and a royal covered, greasy, and thoroughly pissed off man underneath said car. He was trying to get something and bolted, but was struggling to hold the part and operate the ratchet at the same time. I made note of said struggle and jumped underneath to help him. I figured I would give him a hand, then get up and meet my girlfriend and head out. But we ended up getting along pretty well and I had lost track of time and before I knew it two hours had passed. During this time, my girlfriend came out to find me working with her dad underneath this car and she just let it be and brought us some sandwiches and sweet tea. She was more than happy to skip the movie date because she saw I was enjoying myself and her dad was enjoying the help. I'm gonna marry this girl and hopefully one day that car will become ours. After only dating a couple months, my girlfriend and her parents went on a group vacation with my family due to a couple dropping out last minute. After only a few interactions, I find myself eating oysters and doing shots of tequila with her father on a beach in the Dominican. He comes right out with, I hope these oysters aren't putting too much lead in your pencil, since you're sharing a room with my daughter. I'm obviously flustered and at a lack of words. He follows that up with, don't worry, I know she is a sexually active woman. She gets her looks from her mother and her sex drive from me. That is followed up with a 30 minute conversation of his many conquests. I think he likes me. Edit. Wow. I'm loving all the responses. After 2 years we are still together and I have figured out her father is certifiably a real life cartoon caricature. We drink a lot of crown royal together. He's awesome. Edit 2. And now my GF knows my reddit handle. Well, it was good while it lasted. I have 4 daughters so I could write all day about their boyfriend adventures. Titles would be, Dad, Roblo is on the phone for you. The swastika and the Mexican gang member. Did you just leave an old folks home? But I'll write about. Please if there is a god make this just a friend. My oldest, who could never handle her beauty, shows up at the house with her usual bad boy. He is obviously loaded, meth, and is going off about all his money and success. So I glance outside, to see his full blown 70,000 ride, but, alas, all I see is my daughter's car. This guy can't quiet down, and I'm terrified that he is the new man. My daughter tells me he is a bit manic. So I reach for some divine help that he is only a friend, but as enter the kitchen they are deep in an embrace. Ouch. Now I'm a good dad, but there are times that I've let my daughters find their own way out of their own mess. So I informed my daughter that when the SHT hits the fan with this guy, do not come to me to bail you out. 
One month later she calls and informs me that her car has been impounded as he was caught in her car buying drugs from a sting. I reminded her of my stand and she went on her way. Six months later she shows up at the house with the most amazing guy she had ever dated. He doesn't have a trace of bad boy in him, responsible, caring, clean, funny and aware of the world. I figure he's toast or road kill, cause he is too nice, but I was wrong. To cool kids, and a solid, if not perfect, marriage. Sometimes dating bad boys can lead to good ending. My father-in-law was the greatest from the get-go. He told me he could tell I had a genuine interest in his daughter and that her previous boyfriend selections were subpar. He also said that my interest extending to their entire family, not just her, made me stand out. I was always around. Their family was so unlike my own. I just found it a great place to be. He dropped a line on me the second time we met that made me instantly chuckle, but that had scared other boyfriends off. He's a big dude 6 feet 5 inches. I've got 5 acres, a shotgun, and a shovel. The last boyfriend left after he heard that, never to return. He told me later that I remind him of himself. We are both kinda goofy, but can get as serious as the situation calls for. We also hate golf and really don't care for watching sports on TV. I've always volunteered myself to help him out and have often just gone to hang out with him. We also have a love of cheap scotch. When I proposed to my wife I had to get permission from him. He knew it was coming and proceeded to get me hammered in his backyard. He told me he still has the land, the shotgun and the shovel, so divorce isn't an option. I told him it's not just her that I want to lock down. The whole family is amazing and I wanted to be a part of it. Oh the feels. Been married to an awesome wife for 5 years. Our daughter just turned 1. Life is great. Not the father, but I think the story will fit in here 7 years ago I dated a girl who brought me home early in the relationship. This was in Georgia and her entire family was stereotypical redneck. Camper and Harley I'm the driveway, rebel flag on the pole in the front yard, gun case in the living room, etc. When we get there, I find out he's prepared something special for my arrival, an unexpected visit from his even more redneck brother. The two of them spent the entire evening tag, teaming me with jokes and insults, just to see what reaction I would have. I decided the most appropriate response was to throw it right back at him, and we spent about 5 hours insulting each other. Before leaving, he said something I don't think I will ever forget, I like you boy, tell you what, I'm gonna do you a favor. You see that gun cabinet over there? I nod. Why don't you go pick yourself out one of them? Anyone you want. Not sure what to expect, I get up and walk towards the cabinet. About halfway to it. He follows up with cause that's the one I'm gonna shoot you with when you f asterisk 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 this up. We left shortly after, but I already had a plan to win him over. About 3 weeks later, we go to his house again for his birthday. I made sure to hide my gift until he had opened all the others and then handed him a bright pink, sparkly bag. He opened it and pulled out an airsoft pistol from Walmart and a jar of plastic pellets and a note that said I choose this one. His face lit up like a kid on Christmas as he spent the rest of the day shooting his teenage nephew who lived with him. Flash forward 6 months, his daughter and I had split up but he still called me up regularly to come over for some beers. I'm 19 at the time and even invited me to do odd jobs with him like laying hardwood, paying me for hanging out, drink, and learn a skilled trade. I guess I won him over. I have since moved out of state, married a beautiful woman, and had an amazing daughter of my own. And thanks to my ex's dad, I have the perfect dad test. Father of three daughters here, some random observations not in chronological order. Daughter hash one, her boyfriend is competent, fiercely loyal, and caring. I expect they will marry, and I'm just hoping that they use birth control for a few years to get their feet underneath themselves, both are chaste now, daughter converted to Catholicism, haven't discussed specific family planning issues yet but no rushes daughter is very mature on those fronts. Daughter hash 2, boy follows her up to her room 
After she tells him to stay downstairs. I'm upstairs working in my office. Boy does not know this. I throw him back downstairs. Not because he came up to her room. But because he didn't listen to her which is highly disrespectful. Read him the riot act. I think he is a slow learner so stay tuned. Daughter Hash 3 told me years ago that the same age neighborhood boy was showing everyone his penis. Daughter Hash 3 stated it's begun out of control. She was about age 6 at the time. I went to the boy's father and related the observations. He agreed, it is begun out of control. We had a beer. That was 11 years ago, boy is doing okay. My wife died whilst giving birth to our daughter, so naturally my daughter and I are very close. From a young age she would spend her spare time volunteering to help children who were ill or dying, and as she is a musician, she would also teach the children at the hospital I work at how to play the piano and guitar. Along with her kindness, she is the most beautiful young woman I have ever laid my eyes on. She has the sweetest smile and her mother's big blue eyes. When she brought home this scruffy looking guy who hadn't done well in school, who was unemployed and trying to make his band successful, I didn't like him at all. I'm very sorry if I offend anybody but I just couldn't understand the attraction she had to him and hoped it would fade into nothing. She could do better. About a year into their relationship, my daughter discovered that she was pregnant. My heart sunk, not because I didn't want a grandchild, but because I knew she hadn't planned it, and I knew she was too kind to ever consider an alternative to keeping it. Her boyfriend approached me one evening shortly after the pregnancy was announced, with a bottle of whiskey, and asked if we could talk. I accepted the offer, and we sat down, and had a drink together. He confessed that he was scared to have a child, but how he had already started saving money and how he'd started looking for a job. He explained how he knew that he wasn't good enough for my daughter, but that he loved her with all of his heart and wanted to support her in her choice, even if that meant throwing away his music dreams. I will admit, we both got very drunk and ended up getting along well. This boy I had first judged was actually a very nice, warm gentleman who simply wanted the best for my daughter and their future child. That was good enough for me, so I invited him to live with us and got him a job working at the same hospital I work for. Today, I have two grandchildren and my daughter and future son-in-law are getting hitched next weekend. Edit. For those wondering, my daughter and son-in-law need to get used to saying that are doing really well for themselves now. My son-in-law still works with me at the hospital. He is a nursing assistant, trained on the job, and my daughter has just qualified as a social worker. They don't own their own house, but are no longer living with me or rely on me for any funds etc. I have a 4-year-old granddaughter and a 2-year-old grandson. My daughter was 20 having their first child and my son-in-law was 23. It has taken a long time for them to get on track, but I am so proud of them both. As for the abortion comments, there was a time where I completely agreed with you. However, if I'd known how much happiness my grandchildren have brought to our small family back then, the thought of an alternative would never have crossed my mind. Thank you to those who have submitted their lovely comments and best wishes. It is a very kind of you all. Edit 2. Please do not mistake me for being ungrateful, unthankful, or ignorant. But I do not quite understand how Reddit gold works, and therefore it is almost a waste to award me with it. I really appreciate the kind gesture, but I'm sure there are more important causes to award gold to- Again, apologies if I seem ungrateful or unthankful. Please keep your money, folks. Thank you regardless. Edit 3, most likely my final edit. My username comes from the fact that I'm a doctor and my surname is linked with the word root, which was in fact my nickname throughout my childhood. A lot of people have had problems with my family's view on abortion, and that is completely fine. I, personally, am pro-abortion, always have been. As I stated in a previous comment, I did my training at a clinic that delivers abortion, which is pretty ironic when you think about it. This was just our specific situation and I don't mean to offend anybody. Also, my daughter is my favorite human being, my entire world, and therefore I have father rights to brag about her and how wonderful she is. 
Finally, in regards to my romantic life, I do not exactly have much time. These past few days are the first days I've had off work in about 4 months, and I'm also getting on in age, therefore I'm not dating another woman, and have little interest in doing so.